right, so we're going to go ahead and get right into this base build. I'm going to be doing things a, di a bit differently. Usually I do a base tour at the beginning. This time the base tour will be at the ending of the video. So if you would like to see how all the playables are placed or just want to get a view of the complete base, um, feel free to fast forward to the timestamp in the, the description below. Uh, also leave the build the sanctuary code in the description. That way you can test out the base yourself on build the sanctuary. But other than that, let's get right into the build. So we're going to start with a 1x2 and make sure the foundation is raised just a tad bit. Seal it all off except for this door right here. Place the door there as well. Now go ahead and place a TC. Now this is what you're going to live out of until you can gather more resources. <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and build up the bunker so two foundations right here to them both in with walls the left wall here you can put a roof the right wall make sure you put a frame no roof this is going to be the entrance to our uh, bunker <clears throat> also before we start building the bunker out here make sure to put a frame here it's very important crucial to the build the reason why is if this frame is not here, once we build the bunker, there's going to be a tiny little pixel gap between the two roofs here and raiders can see through them and see where your loot is and if there are boxes close enough to the ceiling, they can loot through the pixel gap. So make sure you place a nice frame here to block that vision. So we're going to go ahead and place a triangle, square, and 11 triangles. Cap it off with a square, remove the rest. Come back with squares until you can't no more. And then we're going to place a triangle foundation here, but it does have to be placed a specific way. So when you hover your hammer over it, as you can see those little uh, um, blue pixelated dots, they're swerving to the left. But that's what you want. If they're swerving any other way, you don't want it to be that way. So for example, that's swerving upwards and slightly to the right. You want it to make sure it's swerving to the left. Like that. And then you can upgrade it and it'll start swerving to the right. Then you can remove all these twigs except this one and build out another 11 triangles. Capital go off again with a square, remove all the twig. I'm going to come all the way back with squares, but the last square, it's very important that you connect it to the foundation that you're on. Then we can go ahead and put our two half walls. It must be half walls, otherwise the bunker will not work. You can place your roof there through the, the wall and make sure to remove all the twig. We're going to replace this foundation after it's been removed. So we don't want to upgrade the twig that was there. We want to remove that initial twig and then place a new one. And you can leave this stone. Um, so this should be at 28% stability. And just to give you an example of what I was explaining earlier, you cannot see through this. But if you were to remove this frame, you can see that it's pixel gapped. And so raiders can see through the floor and they can loop through the floor if the, block, the boxes are close enough to the roof. But make sure you place that frame. It doesn't have to be placed in the beginning like how I did. It can be placed now. However, it's very important that you place it from this side and make sure it connects to this foundation. If you place it from this side and connect it to this foundation, it will give stability to the bunker. As you can see, 58% instead of 20% and the bunker will stay sealed and will not open up when you place the uh, roof here. But instead, we want to remove this, make sure you place the frame from this side. This should be at 28% stability. So that way when you place your roof, the bunker opens. <clears throat> and so we're going to turn this into a little shelf loot room, window shelf loot room. 
and make our entrance to the bunker. Do not cover this yet. We want to just place a frame. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and build on the opposite side, making another bunker, and then we'll close out the second floor. So once again, two triangle foundations, a wall on the left along with a floor roof. Um, <clears throat> Now on this side, I place a door instead, instead of a wall. The reason why is I like to put a vending machine here instead of a wall. It allows you to jump up onto the second floor more easier. And then we're going to go ahead and place that frame to seal off that pixel gap. And we're going to make the bunker again. Triangle square, 11 triangles. Cap it off, remove the rest. I'm gonna come back till we can't no more. And very important when we place this triangle, the little blue lines or glitter stuff is, is uh, facing to the left or swerving to the left. And then you can upgrade it. Move all these twigs, go back out 11 times. Tap it off. <clears throat> and when we come back, make sure the last square is connected to this square that you're standing on. Two half walls, place the floor, remove this foundation and replace it. And that's the bunker. We're going to do the same thing we did. On the other side, we're going to make a nice little loop shell, like so, four boxes in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just place this for visual purposes so you can get an idea of how this works. So when you drop down, you can loop all your boxes and you can easily jump on top of that using the box. Um, here we're not going to have a vending machine for the jump up, we will have our workbenches. You can do one, two, or three. They all work as jump ups. <clears throat> and now we want to seal in the second floor. So we're going to put double frames on the opposite sides of each other. These are going to be our entrances slash exits and seal in the rest. Now, just like how we did here, this door going up to the roof, we're going to do this here. And when sealing in the second floor, make sure that this wall right here is connected to this roof floor. 25% stability. You do not want it to be too connected to this or over there. It'll be too high stability. It has to be connected to this wall. Same over here. And the reason why is because that allows us to bunker the second floor as well. Oops make sure we put a frame here first and then a bunker a nine percent stability nine percent stability we place it it'll open both this one and that one same on this side it opens both bunkers now <clears throat> we want to do two things we want to make our entrance from the roof so it's not that easy to get deep down from the roof one door so just do a simple entrance on both sides and the entrance up here if you're um, pretty broke and don't have that much resources to make an airlock or honeycomb you can just put a ladder here and this will be your entrance for now or you can just put a uh, jump up a little simple jump up something like that you know um, but if you have the resources go ahead and honeycomb this and make your airlock window single door and then you can do the same here either put a ladder or a jump up do the same on this side honeycomb the core 
window, single door, and you can use a ladder. And now, <clears throat> these are going to be little loot rooms. We're going to do the same thing here that we did on the bottom. We're going to place a frame here, so that way the pixel gap here, you can't loot these boxes or see our loot rooms. We're going to place it from this side and it will block that. And then we have our loot room. Now, one very important thing is you want to make sure you upgrade both of these to metal before you place this window. Otherwise, you'll never be able to reach back in there to upgrade. So make sure you add your frame, add your shelves, upgrade these before you seal it in. And it's best to place the boxes before you place the window, otherwise it's pretty difficult to place the boxes in there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the expanded starter. Very simple base so far. Uh, bunker from each side, nice honeycomb. You can upgrade the inside to metal or HQM if you have it already. Then let's go ahead and move on and we're going to make the shell now. So this shell is quite a difficult one. Um, it does require <clears throat> some, some building out and coming back with triangles. So what we're going to do is place a trick triangle in seven squares. Cap it off the triangle, remove the rest. And then come back with four half moons. These two you want to upgrade and add one more to the left and upgrade. Remove the rest. Then a square on each side. Triangle attached to those squares. Only upgrade the triangles. Remove the squares. Now since this is gapped, there's no. Uh, this is not connected to the main base. This will start to decay, so we need to go ahead and set up an external TC for this. Um, and this external TC will also act as our gatehouse. So we're gonna go out with two square foundations. They can be stone. Don't worry about making those twig. And then these you want to make twig. One half moon. You can turn this one to wood and then cap it off the triangle. This is where your TC goes. I'll just give you an example of how we're gonna do this. You can put a window, double door, single door, however you like to do your TCs, it's up to you. I choose a window, it's, it's a lot cheaper and really easy to manage. Um, but one thing you wanna do here is we are creating the disconnectable external TCs. Um, Mini Satori's Disconnectables, I go ahead and link a video, uh, I'll link his um, YouTube channel in the description below. You want to make sure it's two half walls. Make sure it's not a full wall, otherwise the disconnectable will not work. Um, for now, I'm just going to place a single door here. Eventually, I'm going to build this out into a nice gatehouse with windows and more doors. Um, but I just need this here to have the stability to be able to connect the TC the main shell you can remove this half moon and now that that's connected um, uh, this will no longer decay these will decay right here because they're, they're technically not connected um, so in order to connect these what you'll need to do is uh, just uh, do something like this This is, this is going to be a uh, the entrance to our shell. So now that this window is attaching to this wall, um, it connects the foundations. So you can do that for now. And basically you have a connected external TC to that side of your shell. And we're going to go ahead and do the opposite side. I'm going to fast forward this one just for the uh, video sake.
All right, so now that they're both connected, we just need to complete the shell. So we're going to come to this foundation where the bunker is. Let's put a, a triangle foundation on each side. These three foundations are connected to the main base, so don't worry about having to create a TC for these. However, we are going to eventually build an external TC on, on both sides uh, because we're going to be wide gapping this base for the shooting floor. Now we're going to close the shell in, but it's very important that you do not put a wall here. If you do, you will no longer be able to open your bunkers. The foundation is occupied, so instead you want to put a foundation and then close it in. Uh, and then you can easily open your bunkers like so from the outside. And if you'd like, you can create a little shelf here, which can store your turrets. All right, so we're gonna do the same on the other side. Just gonna fast forward real quick. There we go. And so now we can go ahead and raise the shell up and also make our entrance. Put one door here and one door here. Oops, not there, but right here. It's important since these are, are the shell has a big gap here, you place a frame here, a rotated frame. If you don't rotate it, you'll still have the gap. So make sure you rotate it and it seals the gap. There you go. Complete our shell entrance. And then we want to lift everything up, except here. We do not want to put walls here yet. Instead, we're actually going to put these as windows and everything else walls. So lift everything up, another floor. like so, and you will need to also lift these frames up to seal the gap. There you go. Now, of course, you're gonna be placing your windows and doors here, and whatever you wanna upgrade, you can upgrade at your own pace. I'm just leaving it stone for the sake of the video, and I'm leaving all the deployables out and uh, doors out just for the sake of the video. Um, you shouldn't need an explanation on how to place those, but at the ending of the video, I will be giving a little, you know, walk around on how I, um, dress my home up. So now we want to seal the shell, and this is very important. These triangles right here, we do not want to connect to the main base, we want to connect to the shell. You should see this little gap, that's how you know you did it right. If you don't, then you did it wrong. So make sure it's gapped and then the square make sure it's connecting to the base and there'll be a little gap here as well. Same to the other side and then we can just fill in the rest. And so for now you have some little peaks in your base um, however, you are vulnerable to, you know, getting roof camped. Someone can land a mini on here and raid the top down and control your peaks. So if you are able to, uh, it's recommended, you know, put a solar panel down, maybe a turret, just to guard your roof. Or try to expand and make your shooting floor as soon as possible. Um, it's good to farm stone in advance so that way you're not stuck at the stage for a long time uh, getting roof camped. So now that the, the base is secure in that sense, we can go ahead and start making the compound. So we're going to finish the gatehouse, a triangle on each side, one the window, frames all around. And then we just want to go ahead and raise this up one more level, like so, and seal it up. Now I am going to place deployables here just to show you how the, uh, the gatehouse should look. So door swinging outwards towards the compound, door swinging inwards to create that airlock, windows of course, and right here, make a nice little uh, 
visible, you know, see who's in your gatehouse or on opposite sides. This is optional. You can turn it into a window. You can make it a wall. I prefer the shop front. Uh, drop box storage can go here. Box on each side plus one small box in the middle. And then these will be turret pods. I'll go ahead and just place it for the sake of the video on one side so you can see how it looks. There you go. All right, I'm going to do the opposite side here. Fast forward real quick. All right, so now that this is done, that's done, we can't place the compound down just yet because we do have to make uh, these two sides. They're not going to be gay houses. They're going to be our wide gap shooting floor with turret pods. So in order to do this one, one triangle, three squares, and cap it off with the triangle. Remove the rest. Come back one half moon and one square. You can remove that half moon. And then what we're going to do off of the square is two triangles, a square and a triangle. And we only want to upgrade these two triangles. We can remove the rest. Then come back with a square, three triangles. Upgrade these three, remove that one. And then square triangle, square triangle. that's how it should look I'm just gonna do that one more time on this side just in case I went too fast so triangle three squares and a triangle come back with one half moon and a square move the rest triangle triangle square triangle upgrade only these two square three triangles upgrade these three and then square triangle square triangle and only upgrade the triangles you can actually leave this triangle out if you want it's totally optional you do not need this triangle actually um, but it won't hurt you if you leave it in if you accidentally upgrade it just like how I did no worries it's all good and so eventually what we're gonna well what we need to do is actually just put frames connecting them that way the foundations are connected if we don't do that the uh, the foundations will decay separately once we put our external TC all right so now what we're gonna do is come out with one half moon plus one triangle upgrade these two then Another half moon, a square, and a triangle. Upgrade that square to twig. This one to stone. And this is where our our third external TC is going to be, just like that one. Make sure the half walls, give it a frame. Put a frame right here so that way you can connect these. Actually, this one needs to be a floor. Just like that. You can remove all the twig. Before we remove this twig right here, we just want to connect these foundations to the TC. We're going to place those. And this frame should float. And now the shooting floor is connected to the external TC. Nothing will decay on this side. And we'll repeat it on that side, but before we do that, I need to show you how to seal this part off now. There's two ways to do this. Um, I learned both of these from Game Lights and Spinky. So Spinky's version is two half walls, two low walls. You can put a furnace here. That way you can jump up and see outside your compound. You can even put a turret pod here, jump on the turret and easily jump on the furnace. This turret will protect 
this entire half, whole half side of your compound really easily. I prefer this one over the Game Light one. But the Game Light one is actually pretty good as well, especially if you have a lot of grubs on your server. You like to take out your, your turrets with compound bows. <clears throat> so instead, you put two full walls and just only place a turret. Um, but the turret, make sure that the leg barely touches that line right there. We don't want to go over. Just right at the line or right before it. And what that allows you to do is put a chain link fence there as well as here and you'll create one right here as well and cover off the top. Now you can loot the turret from this side and put in, you know, restock it with guns and ammo. But what can't be done is they cannot be shot with compound bows any longer with those two chain link fences. So you choose how you want your compound turret pods to be. You can do uh, both game lights or both spinky or you can do one game lights one spinky and see which one you know See which one works for you. I personally prefer the spinky one just because I really like to see outside my compound I love the visibility and It's also easy to set up in the beginning Just like that All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this side. I'm gonna fast forward real quick. Alright, so now that we have all our external TCs down, we can go ahead and compound the base. Um, what you're going to want to do is place all your um, metal barricades. So, placing them on the main gatehouses, just make sure you place twigs here, so that way you can easily place the two on the side. And then one directly in the middle. Then you can shoot off these twigs. Now alternatively, you can go ahead and remove this barricade. You don't need to place that one. You, If you want to save resources, if you don't have enough metal and metal blades to make a barricade, you can just put this. Um, this is not laterable for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, but it's pretty good. It's not as effective because, you know, people can help each other boost up, jump on each other's heads, and then eventually jump in here. And, you know, they'll have free range right here. So I personally prefer the barricade, but it's just an option you have if you're pretty starved on resources. So let's do this one as well. Very simple. And this one's very simple as well. You want to place one, oops, you want to place one directly in the middle. In order to do that, as you can see, it's red. You just got to place some twigs. And if you want to place it closer to you, just place a twig here. And then remove all the twigs once it's placed. All right. Now you can go ahead and add your walls. Um, a little trick here when placing your walls, start off at this turret pod and not the gatehouse. You're gonna go ahead and measure them like this. You're gonna clip them slightly into the wall and then the left side of the, of the gate has to touch the wood foundation at that TC to our left. So, so long as the blue of this uh, wall is slightly touching that wood foundation to our left, you can place it. Then when placing this one, clip it into the wall just a tad bit and then make sure the right side of the blue wall is just slightly going over the wall we just placed. What, that's, what that allows you to do is just place an easy V like so. 
and you can place your furnace right there in the middle. And I'll go ahead and just fast forward. All right, so there goes the compound. Doesn't have to be perfect. But it should be a total of 12 wooden high walls, or 16 actually, four on each side, four, eight, 12, 16. And that's a completed compound. And then we can go ahead and now start moving into the shooting floor. Now the shooting floor, you have to make sure you raise all these frames up one level. We're gonna create the wide gap over here. So two triangles and a triangle towards you. Square triangle on the right, square triangle on the left. And do that over here as well. Two triangles, triangle towards you, square triangle, square triangle. Now we wanna put one triangle here, but make sure it's not connecting to that floor. It needs to connect to the, the wall and it has to have this gap. If you don't, and it connects to the floor instead, sometimes you can't even place it actually, but this one you could. So for example, if you connected it to this vault, this floor instead, you cannot place anything here. So make sure it's connected to the wall. What you have here is a nice wide gap. It's sort of going to wrap around the entire base. Um, however, we're not doing a wide gap here at, above the entrance. We're doing a, uh, something I'm testing out. It's, you know, it's a bit unique, a little janky, but I like it. Um, I'm going to raise windows up all the way except right here. This one's going to be a, a wall. Cover this up with roofs two frames and now we want to add half floors here yeah half walls and cover it with one triangle so what this allows you to do is you can you know still take your heli and see straight out you can drop down shoot people in your compound and also peek inside your shell now I know this is annoying right here dropping down you can't really see much so to fix that what we're gonna do is um, we're going to add a, a frame and a frame and we're going to put furnaces right here to just give you that nice mobility, mobility, mobility. Uh, I can't even say the word <laughs> mobility. So before I place the furnace, what I like to do is add campfires on each corner. That way, you could spawn in here by placing two bags and easily re-kit and retake your base if you're getting raided. Also, you can do something like this. Make a shelf. And this shelf can also have a box where you have some kits in, some random guns, spare guns, and you can put a turret up here. This turret will cover the entire half of your shooting floor, and we'll do the same over here. So once again, cover everything in windows, except this last one, we're gonna put a wall, cover the roof, two frames, half wall, half wall, floor, Frame, frame. Temporary twig here just to make that shelf. And then you can put your furnaces here and sleeping bags and whatnot. 
Um, of course, you want to put all your embrasures. And then we want to cover the entire wide gap shooting floor with windows. So it should look that, like this from the outside. And from the inside, what we want to do is now seal the roof as well as make our third floor here. So I want to start from the third floor, jump up, I'm going to make an entrance slash exit on both sides and then seal the rest like so. Now this can be a bedroom or it can be a loot room or it can be a battery room. Whichever you prefer, it's up to you. I like to have at least one battery, uh, one main battery here on the third floor. And one of these can be a bedroom. So one bedroom on this side. One battery room on this side and I'll sh actually show you how the bedrooms are so you would place your garage door and then place a locker as close as you can to this wall while making sure that the very left tip of the locker doesn't really go over that left uh, line too much just right before this line make sure it's as back as possible and once it is you should be able to place a bed here just snug right in the middle and when you close your garage door you cannot see the bed meaning it cannot be splashed with rockets or explode ammo you have to entirely raid this garage door to get this bed so it's a good spawn point you can make both of these bedrooms if you like um, it's up to you so now we're gonna go ahead and add some frames here And uh, for these, make sure it's connecting here. That way there's no gap. If it's connecting over here, there's a slight gap that people can peek and shoot you through. So make sure it's connecting like so. And these frames that I just placed um, covers the gap. Same on this side. Sweet. Now, um, we're going to start working from the wide gap and then work our way in uh, so from the wide gap on these corners we're going to actually place um, uh, ankle biters where we can shoot uh, people who are on our roof so you add a frame here and a floor then cover it with walls and we'll have a turret pod up there eventually do the same on this side, half wall, window, frame, frame, floor, turret pod will go there eventually. And you can have any jump up you like here, you can either do a furnace, see on your roof and shoot people, you can do a sprinkler, you can do a siren light, whatever works for you. And now we want to put a frame on this side, a frame on that side actually just frames all around um, here as well so now we're gonna cover this up and this will get a frame instead of a floor because this is actually going to be our entrance such exit to the base from the roof and we'll seal this in with a square box because we can make this a nice little bedroom. Now it's entirely up to you if you want the bedroom to be facing this way closer to the exit slash shooting floor or alternatively you can have it like this where your bedroom is closer to your core. However I prefer it to be closer to the shooting floor slash door entrance because normally when you're getting top down it's directly through the middle 
and I do not want splash damage to take the doors here out and my bedrooms out so this is a lot stronger usually people don't raid through the doors on the roofs so it's a waste of rockets and if they do that and get your bedrooms you're sort of winning anyways because they're wasting loads of rockets rather than just pummeling you from the top I'm gonna do the same here half wall window frame frame floor and then seal it in dirt pod And then frames all around, including right here. Cover up the roof. Add a frame here. I'll eventually put a triangle hatch there. This will be our roof entrance. And then seal this up. And that's going to be our bedroom. Now, looking from the roof, you can see that it's kind of coming along. We have an entrance on each side. Four turret pods along with uh, some sneaky ankle biters. Then all we have to do is seal this up. Now, you don't want to just seal it up normally because that creates a gap. So what you want to do is first put a frame. Then seal it up. So people cannot shoot you from inside your shooting floor. Frame, floor. Do that all around. that pretty much covers it up it's optional for you to place some roofs like so so people can't easily see uh, on your roof what you're doing can't roof camp you so easily as well there you go so just to give you an idea of how i do it you know i have my entrances like so turrets all around that um, and I also have my windmills on top of my two entrances just too high is fine enough now I place these in twig because whenever you're placing your windmill I've, I learned this from game lights um, if you place it right in the middle and then rotate it you can just go ahead and remove these twigs and it'll, it'll float so you save some upkeep and also it can't get soft-sided. Someone can't just soft-side this and this despawns. It'll stay floating there indefinitely until you actually kill the windmill or kill the frames. So keep it directly in the middle like that and then you just rotate it one time. Just like that. So I would definitely have a ladder hatch here going up. So I'm actually going to show you how this bedroom works um, because this is how this is how I set mine up. Make sure you place the bed far left corner as you want, or you know far right corner or left corner, whichever one. So long as it's snugged perfectly into the corner, then you can go ahead and place. A bag alongside it this will be a two-person bedroom the second person will not have a bed respawn instead of to have a bag respawn which is a lot you know uh, longer but it is better than nothing so go like that and you're able to place a locker snug right there and then with this gap here you can take uh, a battery like so boom you can do the same thing on the opposite side over here. Make sure I don't forget your ladder hatch. Do it there. Make sure you cover everything with an embrasure. Either put your furnace or your siren light so that way you can have a nice jump up. I'll just put the furnaces for the sake of the video. The furnaces are really nice because they're so easy to jump on. And now what we'll do is, I really like to have these with garage doors. 
uh, for two reasons. One, if somebody for a rocket see your shooting floor right here, they don't just have visibility into your base already. They still have to spend another three rockets to get the garage door. So a total of seven. That's one reason. Second reason is that if you spawn in this room, if someone has taken some of your shooting floor, they're top downing you. It's nice to respawn here and surprise them by opening both garage doors and the turret will surprise them and you'll be shooting them as well. So it's unlikely they'll survive if they're already on this side. You can place double doors, garage doors, it's totally your preference on what doors you want to add, armored doors, whichever you can afford is usually what you know your place. Make sure you know the core has to be HQM. And it's important that this wall right here definitely needs to be HQM. This is the only wall that's not honeycombed. Everything else is honeycombed. Since this wall is not honeycombed, if someone gets into your shell, 15 rockets to get in here. And if you have two garage doors, another six rockets to get to your TC. So a total of 20 run rockets to your TC from within the shell. This will eventually be, you know, metal. And these should eventually have, you know, garage doors and most likely an armored door in the front. So it's going to cost a minimum of seven to eight rockets to get into your shell. Another 15 to get here, which is about 22. Another six to get to your TC about 28 rockets to your TC from within your compound and another two rockets to destroy the wood walls. So 30 rockets total to your TC. Now that's only to your TC. That's not to get your bunkered loot room here plus that vending machine. And it's not to get a lot of your loot up here and your bedrooms where you can retake. Now I like to go ahead and attach a frame here just in case this foundation uh, gets soft-sided we don't want this to just get soft-sided which will um, start decaying your shell because the TC will no longer be attached to them to the shell so a frame here will, can, you can avoid that I've been using this this little vending machine trick for a couple of months now however I just saw a video that Spinky released not too long ago showing you how to easily place two vending machines behind this wall um, without having to worry about people being able to loot them and without you having to worry about misplacing your vending machines ultimately messing up um, the concept so you place a wall here doesn't matter which soft side or hard side it is um, once you have it placed you can go ahead and do this. So you want to place with triangle, with triangle as close as you can to the wall. There you go. That's much better. So we'll demolish these two. Still can't look from this side. Still can't look from that side. Still can't look from the top. And then all you have to do to open it is place a, a roof slant. And you got yourself some extra loot. As well as a way to sell stuff from your, you know, from the drone shops. You can open up either side to get both vending machines and you'll definitely want to upgrade this to metal so it's an eight rocket raid cost for them to get the the contents of this or 4c4 um so yeah at this point you're pretty much just upgrading the base how you like it all right so this is how the base looks once everything is upgraded all deployables are placed give you a little tour the mini satori disconnectable like so
got some nice visibility in your base and outside your base turrets defend you and even more turrets defend you drop box storage entrance to our base with some nice visibility a shitload of storage in the shell of your base for miscellaneous items and trash loot some nice turrets you don't have to put as much turrets that I have in this video obviously I'm just you know putting it for some exaggeration if you get loaded and you have a good wipe or if you got some friends to help you out and you bag them in nice but you know if you're just a duo and you're playing casually you know you might only have a couple turrets that's fine Go into the second floor entrance. Bunch of bags. Some nice loot rooms back here. Some lockers. And bunkers all the way up and down. You have to go outside to open the bunkers. Place a twig here. Place a twig here. This will open all bunkers bottom and top and this goes into our core I have a little battery here just in case our batteries on the top floors get destroyed TC of course as you can see pretty low upkeep for the main core nice loot room cheeky little shotgun trap three bags total Now going up to the third floor and shooting floor, we have another bedroom, a nice battery room, little drop boxes here, of course our nice cheesy turrets to defend you just in case your shooting floor gets taken over, respawn points for your shell, you can close your door there from here as well peek outside your compound and these beautiful wide gaps and use sprinklers I like using sprinklers you can use a furnace if you'd like whatever you like same on this side nice bedroom you can power your SAM sites with this battery now this is one trouble I've had is sometimes you get stuck here and that's because the garage door is facing outwards so you can face it inwards you just have to place the bag first or place the garage door then the bag and then you won't have that problem so yeah that's pretty much the base not bad for a trio base as defendable as this one it's a really nice mixture of online and offline defense plenty of storage space vending machines turrets SAM sites just about everything you need in a trio base um, if you like the base please comment like and subscribe if you don't like the base Please do the same. Let me know, you know, what I can do to improve. Um, I took a long break from YouTube last year. I started in the summer and took like a six or seven month break. So I'm just getting back into building again. Um, so all your feedback and comments, everything is really appreciated. It helps me grow as a builder as well as a YouTuber. And yeah, I hope you guys like it. Let me know and I'll definitely be making some more builds soon in the future. Appreciate you all. Have a good wipe.